All right, we are going to continue our book. Um, we just left off where um, August was on the tour with Julian and Charlotte and Jack Will. So the next part is called The Grand Tour. Jack Will, Julian, and Charlotte and I went down a big hallway to some wide stairs. No one said a word as we walked up to the third floor. When we got to the top of the stairs, we went down a little hallway full of lots of doors. Julian opened the door marked 301. This is our homeroom, he said, standing in front of the half-open door. We have Miss Potosa. They say she's okay, at least for homeroom. I heard she's really strict if you get her for math, though. That's not true, said Charlotte. My sister had her last year, and she's totally nice. Not what I heard, answered Julian, but whatever. He closed the door and continued walking down the hallway. This is the science lab, he said when he got to the next door. And just like that, and just like he did two seconds ago, he stood in front of the half-open door and started talking. He didn't look at me once while he talked, which was okay because I wasn't looking at him either. You won't know who you have for science until the first day of school, but you want Mr. Haller. He used to be in the lower school. He would play this giant tuba in class. It was a baritone horn, said Charlotte. It was a tuba, answered Julian, closing the door. Dude, let him go inside so we can check it out, said Jack Will pushing past Julian and opening the door. Go inside if you want, Julian said. It was the first time he looked at me. I shrugged and walked over to the door. Julian moved out of the way quickly, like he was afraid I might accidentally touch him as I passed. Nothing much to see, Julian said, walking in after me. He started pointing to a bunch of stuff around the room. That's an incubator. That big black thing, that's a chalkboard. These are the desks. These are the chairs. Those are the Bunsen burners. This is a gross science poster. This is chalk. This is an eraser. I'm sure he knows what an eraser is, Charlotte said, sounding a little like Via. How would I know what he knows? Julian answered. Mr. Tushman said he's never been to school before. You know what an eraser is, right? Charlotte asked me. I admit I was feeling so nervous that I didn't even know what to say or do except look at the floor. Hey, can you talk? Asked Jack Will. Yeah, I nodded. I still really hadn't looked at any of them not yet, not directly. You know what an eraser is, right? Asked Jack Will. Oh, of course, I mumbled. I told you there was nothing to see in here, said Julian, Julian shrugging. I have a question, I said, trying not to keep my voice steady. Um, what exactly is homeroom? Is, is that like a subject? No, that's just your group, explained Charlotte, ignoring Julian's smirk. It's like where you go when you get to school in the morning and your homeroom teacher takes attendance and stuff like that. In a way, it's your main class, even though it's not really a class. I mean, it's a class, but I think he gets it, Charlotte, said Jack Will. Do you get it? Charlotte asked me. Yeah, I nodded at her. Okay, let's get out of here, said Jack Will, walking away. Wait, Jack, we're supposed to be answering questions said Charlotte. Jack Will rolled his eyes a little as he turned around. Do you have any more questions? He asked. Hmm, no, I answered. Oh, well, actually, yes. Is your name Jack or Jack Will? Jack is my first name. Will is my last name. Oh, because Mr. Tushman introduced you as Jack Will. So I thought, ha, you thought his name was Jack Will, laughed Julian. Yeah, some people call me by my first and last name, Jack shru said, shrugging. I don't know why. Anyway, can we go now? Let's go to the performance, spa performance space next, said Charlotte, leading the way out of the science room. It's very cool. You'll like it, August. The performance space. Charlotte basically didn't stop talking as we headed down to the second floor. She was describing the play they had put on last year, which was Oliver. She played Oliver even though she's a girl. As she said this, she pushed open the double doors to a huge auditorium. At the other end of the room was a stage. Charlotte started skipping toward the stage. Stage. Julian ran after her and then turned around halfway down the aisle. Come on, she said loudly, waving for me to follow her, which I did. There were like hundreds of people in the audience that night, said Charlotte, and it took me a second to realize she was talking about Oliver. I was so, so nervous. I had so many lines and I had all these songs to sing. It was so, 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 so hard. 
although she was talking to me, she really didn't look at me much. On opening night, my parents were all the way in the back of the auditorium, like where Jack is now. But when the lights are off, you can't really see that far back. So I was like, where are my parents? Where are my parents? And then Mr. Resnick, our theater arts teacher last year, he said, Charlotte, stop being such a diva. And I was like, okay. And then I spotted my parents and I was totally fine. I didn't forget a single line. While she was talking, I noticed Julian staring at me out of the corner of his eye. This is something I see people do a lot with me. They think I don't know they're staring, but I can tell from the way their heads are tilting. And I turned around to see where Jack had gone to. He had stayed in the back of the auditorium like he was bored. We put a play on every year, said Charlotte. I don't think he was going to want to be in the school play, Charlotte, said Julian sarcastically. You can be in a play without actually being in the play, Charlotte answered looking at me. You can do the lighting, you can paint the backdrops. Oh yeah, whoopee, said Julian twirling his finger in the air. But you don't have to take the theater arts elective if you don't want to, Charlotte said shrugging. There's dance and choir or band. There's leadership. Oh, only dorks, only dorks take leadership, Julian interrupt, interrupted. <laughs> Julian, you're being obnoxious, said Charlotte, which made Julian laugh. I'm taking the science elective, I said. Cool, said Charlotte. Julian looked directly at me. The science elective is supposedly the hardest elective of, of all, he said. No offense, but if you never ever been in school before why do you think you're suddenly going to be smart enough to take the science elective i mean have you have you ever even studied science before like real science not the kind you do in kits yeah i nodded he was homeschooled julian said charlotte so teachers came to his house asked julian looking puzzled no his mother taught him answered charlotte is she a teacher julian said is your mother a teacher? Charlotte asked me. No, I said. So she's not a real teacher, said Julian, as if that proved his point. That's what I mean. How can someone who's not a real teacher actually teach, teach science? I'm sure you'll do fine, said Charlotte, looking at me. Let's just go to the library now, Jack called out, sounding really bored. Why is your hair so long? Julian said to me. He sounded like he was annoyed. I didn't know what to say, so I just shrugged. Can I ask you a question? He asked. I shrugged. Didn't he just ask me a question? Like, <laughs> what's the deal with your face? I mean, were you in a fire or something? Julian, that's so rude, said Charlotte. I'm not being rude, said Julian. I'm just asking a question. Mr. Tushman said we could ask questions if we wanted to. Not rude questions like that, said Charlotte. Besides, he was born like that. That's what Mr. Tushman said. You just weren't listening. I was so listening, said Julian. I just thought maybe he was in a fire too. Jeez, Julian, said Jack. Just shut up. You shut up, Julian yelled. Come on, August, said Jack. Let's go to the library already. I walked toward Jack and followed him out into the, li into the out of the auditorium. He held the do double doors open for me, and as I passed, he looked at at me right in the face kind of daring me to look back at him which I did then I actually smiled I don't know sometimes when I when I have the feeling like I'm almost going to cry it can turn into an almost laughing feeling and that must have been the feeling I was having then because I smiled almost like I was going to giggle the thing is because of the way my face is people don't know me very well people that don't know me very well don't always get that I'm smiling my mouth doesn't go up in the corners the way other people's mouths do. It just goes straight across my face. But somehow, Jack Will got that. I had, I got that I had smiled at him, and he smiled back. Julian's a jerk, he whispered before Julian and Charlotte reached us. But dude, you're going to have to talk. He said this seriously like he was trying to help me. I nodded as Julian and Charlotte caught up to us. We were all quiet for a second. All of us just kind of nodding, looking at the floor. Then I looked up at Julian. The word supposedly, by the way, I said, what are you talking about? You said supposedly before. I said, I did not. Yeah, you did. Charlotte nodded. You said the science elective is supposedly really hard. I heard you. I absolutely did not, he insisted. Whatever, said Jack. Let's just go. 
Yeah, let's go, agreed Charlotte, following Jack down the stairs to the next floor. I started to follow her, but Julian cut right in front of me, which actually made me stumble backwards. Oops, sorry about that, said Julian, but I could tell from the way he looked at me that he wasn't really sorry at all. The deal. Mom and Mr. Tushman were talking when we got back to the office. Miss Garcia was the first one to see us come back, and she started smiling her shiny smile as we walked in. So August, what did you think? Did you like what you saw? She asked. Yeah, I nodded looking over at Mom. Jack, Julian, and Charlotte were standing by the door not sure where to go or if they were, or if they were still needed. I wonder what else they've been told about me before they'd met me. Did you see the baby chick? Mom asked me. As I shook my head, Julian said, Are you talking about the baby chickens in science? Those got donated to a farm at the end of every those get donated to a farm at the end of every school year. Oh, said Mom, disappointed. But they hatch new ones every year in science, Julian added, so August will be able to see them again in the spring. Oh good, Mom said, eyeing me. They were so cute, August. I wish she, she wouldn't talk to me like I was a baby in front of other people. So, August, said Mr. Tushman, did these guys show you around enough or do you want me to, or do you want to see more? I realized I forgot to ask them to show you the gym. We did anyway, Mr. Tushman, said Julian. Excellent, said Mr. Tushman. And I told him about the school play and some of the electives, said Charlotte. Oh no, she said suddenly, we forgot to show him the art room. That's okay, said Mr. Tushman, but we can show it to but we can show it to him now, Charlotte offered. Don't we have to pick up Via soon? I said to Mom. That was our signal for telling Mom I really wanted to leave. Oh, you're right, she said, getting up. I could tell she was pretending to check the time on her watch. I'm sorry, everybody. I lost track of time. We have to go pick up my daughter at her new school. She's taken an unofficial tour today. This part wasn't a lie that Via was checking out her new school today. The part that was a lie, that that was, er, the part that was a lie was that we were picking her up at the school, which we weren't. She was coming home with dad later. Where does she go to school? Asked Mr. Tushman getting up. She start, she's starting Faulkner High School this fall. Wow, that's not an easy school to get into. Good for her. Thank you, said mom nodding. It'll be a bit of a sheep though. A, the A train down to 86, then the crosstown bus all the way to east side. It takes an hour that, that way, but it's just a 15 minute drive. It'll be worth it. I know a couple kids who got into Faulkner and love it, said Mr. Tushman. We should really go, Mom, I said, tugging at her pocketbook. We said goodbye kind of quickly after that. I think Mr. Tushman was a little surprised that we were leaving so suddenly, and then I wondered if he would blame Jack and Charlotte, even though it was really only Julian who made me feel kind of bad. Everyone was really nice, I made sure I made sure to tell Mr. Tushman before we left. I look forward to having you as a student, said Mr. Tushman, patting my back. Bye, I said to Jack, Charlotte, and Julian, but I didn't look at them or look up at all until I left the building. Home. As soon as we had walked at, at least half a block from the school, Mom said, So, how'd it go? Did you like it? Not yet, Mom. When we get home, I said. The moment we got inside, I ran to my room and threw myself onto my bed. I could tell Mom didn't know what was up, and I guess I really didn't either. I felt very sad and a tiny bit happy at the exact same time. Kind of like laughing, crying, feeling all over again. My dog Daisy followed me into my room, jumped on the bed, and started licking me all over my face. Who's a good girly? I said in my dad voice. Who's a good girly? Is everything okay, sweetness? Mom said. She wanted to sit down beside me, but Daisy was hogging the bed. Excuse me, Daisy. She sat down, nudging Daisy over. Were those kids not nice to you, Augie? Oh, no, I said, only half lying. They were okay. But were they nice? Mr. Tushman went out of his way to tell me what sweet kids they are. Mm-hmm, I nodded, but I kept looking at Daisy, kissing her on the nose and rubbing her ear until her back leg did that little flea scratch shake. That boy Julian is especially nice, Mom said. <laughs> oh no, he was the least nice. I liked Jack though. He was nice, 
I thought his name was Jack Will, but it's just Jack. Wait, maybe I'm getting them confused then. Which was the one with the dark hair that was brushed forward? Julian. And he wasn't nice? <laughs> no, not nice. Oh, she thought about this for a second. Okay, so is he kind of the kid who's one way in front of grown-ups and another way in front of kids? Yeah, I guess. <sighs> ah, I hate those, she answered, nodding. He was like, so August, what's the deal with your face? I said, looking at, looking at Daisy the whole time, were you in a fire or something? Mom didn't say anything. When I looked up at her, I could tell she was completely shocked. He didn't say it in a mean way, I said quickly. He was just asking. Mom nodded. But I really liked Jack, I said. He was like, shut up, Julian. And Charlotte was like, you're so rude, Julian. Mom nodded again. She pressed her fingers on her forehead like she was pushing against a headache. I'm so sorry, Augie, she said quietly. Her cheeks were bright wet red. No, it's okay, Mom, really. You don't have to go to that school if you don't want, sweetie. I want to, I said. Augie, really, Mom, I want to. And I wasn't lying. First day jitters. Okay, so I admit that the first day of school, I was so nervous that the butterflies in my stomach were more like pigeons flying around my insides. Mom and Dad were probably a little more nervous, too, but they acted all excited for me, taking pictures of me and Via before we left the house since it was Via's first day of school, too. Up until a few days before, we still weren't sure I would be going to school at all. After my tour of school, Mom and Dad had reversed sides on whether I should go or not. Mom was now the one saying I shouldn't go, and Dad was saying I should. Dad had told me he was really proud of how I handled myself with Julian and that I was turning into quite the strong man. And I heard him tell Mom that he now thought she had been right all along. But Mom, I could tell, wasn't so sure anymore. When Dad told her that, when Dad told her that he and Via wanted to talk, to, walk me to school today, too. Whoa. When Dad told her that he and Via wanted to walk me to school today, too, since it was on the way to the subway station, Mom seemed relieved that we would all be going together, and I guess I was too. Even though Beecher Prep is just a few blocks from our house, I've only been on that block a couple of times before. In general, I try to avoid blocks where there's a lots of kids roaming around. On our block, everyone knows us, or knows me, and I know everyone. And I know every brick and every tree trunk and every crack in the sidewalk. I know Mr. Grimaldi, the lady, or sorry, Miss Grimaldi, the lady who's always sitting in her window. The old guy who walks up and down the street whistling like a bird. I know the deli on the corner where mom gets her bagels and the waitresses at the coffee shop who all call me honey and give me lollipops whenever they see me. I love my neighborhood of North River Heights, which is why it was so strange to be walking down these blocks feeling like it was all new to me suddenly. Aim Force, Ames 4 Avenue, a street I've been down a million times, totally looked different for some reason, full of people I've never seen before, waiting for buses and pushing strollers. We crossed Ames 4 and turned up Heights Place. Via walked next to me like she usually does, and Mom and Dad were behind us. As soon as we, were, we turned the corner, we saw all the kids in front of the school, hundreds of them talking to each other in little groups, laughing or standing with their parents who were talking with other parents. I kept my head down. Everyone's just as nervous as you are, said Via in my ear. Just remember that this is everyone's first day of school, okay? Mr. Tushman was greeting students and parents in front of the school entrance. I have to admit, so far, nothing bad had happened. I didn't catch anyone staring or even noticing me. Only once did I look up to see some girls looking my way and whispering in their hands, cupped over their mouth. But they looked away when they saw me notice them. We reached the front entrance. Okay. So this is it, big boy, said Dad, putting his hands on top of my shoulder. Have a great first day. I love you, said Via, giving me a big kiss and a hug. You too, I said. I love you, Augie, said Dad, hugging me. Bye. Then Mom hugged me, and I could tell she was about to cry, which would have totally embarrassed me. So I just gave her a fast, hard hug, turned, and disappeared into the school. Locks. I went straight to room 301 on the third floor. 
Now I was glad I'd gone on that little tour because I know ex I knew exactly where to go and didn't have to look up once. I noticed some kids were definitely staring at me now. I did my thing of pretending not to notice. I went inside the classroom and the teacher was writing on a chalkboard while all the kids started sitting at different desks. The desks were in a half circle facing the chalkboard, so I chose the desk in the middle toward the back, which I thought would make it harder for anyone to stare at me. I still kept my head way down, just looking up enough from under my bangs to see everyone's feet. As the desk started to fill up, I did notice that no one sat down next to me. A couple of times someone was about to sit next to me, then changed his or her mind at the last minute and sat somewhere else. Hey August! It was Charlotte, giving me her little wave if she sat down at a desk in the front of the classroom. Why anyone would ever choose to sit way up in front of the class, I don't know. Hey! I said, nodding hello. Then I noticed Julian was sitting a few seats away from her, talking to some other kids. I know he saw me, but he didn't say hello. Suddenly, someone was sitting down next to me. It was Jack Will. Jack. What's up? He said, nodding to me. Hey, Jack. He, I answered, waving my hand, which I immediately wished I hadn't done because it felt so uncool. Okay, kids. Okay, everybody, settle down said the teacher, now facing us. She had written her name, Miss Potosa, on the chalkboard. Everybody find your seat, please. Come in, she said to a couple of kids who had just walked into the room. There's a seat there and right there. She hadn't noticed me yet. Now the first thing I want everyone to do is stop talking and, she noticed me, put your backpacks down and quiet down. She had only hesitated for a millionth of a, sec of a second, but I could tell the moment she saw me, like I said, I'm used to it not by now. I'm gonna take attendance and do the seating chart. She continued sitting on the edge of her desk. Next to her were three neat rows of accordion folders. When I call your name, come up and I'll hand you, your, you a folder with your name on it. It contains your class schedule and your combination lock, which you should not try to open until I tell you to. Your locker number is written on the class schedule. Be forewarned that some lockers are not right outside the classroom, but down the hall. And before anyone even thinks of asking, no. You cannot switch lockers, and you can't switch locks. Now, if there's time at the end of this period, we're all going to get to know each other a little better. Okay? Okay. She picked up the clipboard on her desk and started reading the names out loud. Okay. So, Julian Albans? She said, looking up. Julian raised his hand and said, here at the same time. Hi, Julian, she said, making a note on her seating chart. She picked up her very first folder and held it out toward, toward him. Come pick it up she said, kind of n no nonsense. He got up and took it from her. Zyma Jin. She handed a folder to each kid as they read off the names. As she went down the list, I noticed that the seat next to me was the only empty seat, even though there were two kids sitting at one desk just a few seats away. When she called the name of one of them, a big came named Henry Joplin, who had already looked like a teenager, she said, Henry, there's an empty desk right over there. Why don't you go take a seat, okay? She handed him his folder and pointed to the desk next to mine. Although I didn't look at him directly, I could tell Henry did not want to move next to me, just by the way he dragged his backpack on the floor as he came over, like he was moving in slow motion. Then he plopped his backpack up really high on the right side of the desk, so it was kind of like a wall between his desk and mine. My, uh, Markowitz, Miss Fatosa was saying. Here, said a girl about four desks down from mine. Miles Nori? Here, said the kid that had been sitting with Henry Joplin. As he walked back to his desk, I saw him shoot Henry a poor you look. August Pullman, said Miss Potosa. Here, I said quietly, raising my head a bit, hand a bit. Hi, August, she said, smiling at me very nicely when I went up to get my folder. I kind of felt everyone's eyes burning into, the back, into my back for a few seconds as I stood in front of the class and everyone looked down when I walked back to my desk. I resisted spinning the combination when I sat down, even though everyone else was doing it, because she had told us not to. I was already pretty good at opening locks anyways, because I've used them on my bike. Henry kept trying to open his lock, but he couldn't do it. He was getting frustrated and was cursing under his breath. Miss Potosa called out the next few names. The last name was Jack Will. After she handed Jack his folder, she said, Okay, so everybody write your combination sounds somewhere safe that you won't forget, okay? But if you forget, which happens at least 
3.2 times per semester, Ms. Garcia has a list of all the combination numbers. Now go ahead and take your locks out of your folder and spend a couple of minutes practicing how to open them. Though, I know some of you went ahead and did that anyways. She was looking at Henry when she said that. And in the meanwhile, I'll tell you guys a little something about myself and then you guys can tell me a little bit about yourselves and we'll um, get to know each other. Sound good? Good. She smiled at everyone, though I felt like she was smiling at me the most. It wasn't a shiny smile like Miss Garcia's smile, but a normal smile like she meant it. She looked very different from what I thought teachers were going to look like. I guess I thought she'd look like Miss Fowl from Jimmy Neutron, an old lady with a big bun on the top of her head. But in fact, she looked exactly like Ma Mon Motham from Star Wars Episode 6, haircut kind of like a boy's in a big white shirt kind of like a tunic. She, looked, she turned around and started writing on the chalkboard. Henry still couldn't get his lock open, and he was getting more and more frustrated every time someone else popped one, popped one open. He got really annoyed when I was able to open mine on the first try. The funny thing is, if he hadn't put the backpack between us, I most definitely would have helped him. Last chapter today. Around the room, Miss Potosa told, told us a little bit about who she was. It was boring stuff about where she originally came from and how she always wanted to teach. She left her job on Wall Street about six years ago to pursue her dream and teach kids. She ended by asking if anyone had questions and Julian raised his hand. Yes, she had to look at the list to remember his name. Julian, <laughs> that's cool about how you're pursuing your dream, he said. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome, he said proudly. Okay, so why don't you tell a little bit about yourself, Julian? Actually, here's what I want everyone to do. Think of two things you want other people to know about you. Actually, wait a minute. How many of you came from the Beecher Lower School? About half of the kids raised their hand. Okay, so a few of you already know each other. But the rest of you, I guess, are new to the school, right? Okay, so everyone think of two things you want other people to know about you. And if you know some of the other kids, try to think of something they don't already know about you. Okay? Okay. So let's start with Julian, and we'll go around the room. Julian scrunched up his face and started tapping his forehead like he was really thinking hard. Okay, whenever you're ready, Miss Potosa said. Okay, so number one is that, do me a favor and start with your names, okay? Miss Potosa interrupted. It'll help me remember everyone. Oh, okay. So my name is Julian, and the number one thing I'd like to tell everyone about myself is that I just got Battleground Mystic for my Wii, and it's totally awesome. And the number two thing is that we got a ping pong table this summer. Very nice. I love ping pong, said Miss Potosa. Does anyone have any questions for Julian? Is Battleground Mystic multiplayer or one player, said the kid named Miles. Not those kid kinds of questions, guys, said Miss Potosa. Okay, so how about you, she pointed at, she pointed to Charlotte, probably because her desk was closest to the front. Oh, sure. Charlotte didn't hesitate for even a second, like she knew exactly what she was going to say. My name is Charlotte. I have two sisters, and we got a new puppy named Suki in July. We got her from an animal shelter, and she's so cute. That's great, Charlotte. Thank you, said Miss Potosa. Okay, then who's next? <laughs>